let's just check our posture sink the hips sink the shoulders nice and tall through the spine gently draw the toes in so that you're activating the arches in the foot gently breathe in and gently breathe out relax the shoulders relax around the jaw just have your chin resting gently on an imaginary ball and take a few slow deep breaths feel the hips sink feel the back lengthen and then turn the waist just have the arms moving gently in a relaxed manner just feel the breath as it goes in feel the breath as it comes out the hips <clears throat> relax around the knees relax the ankles draw the toes in activate the arches of the foot softly gazing forwards listening behind and above Relax around the jaw. Feel the ground under your feet. Okay, outside turn. So we just do the outside turn. So you transfer the weight and turn, and you're just gently gazing through the corner, relax the shoulders, relax the elbows and the wrists, gently breathe in and out. Okay, inside turn. Keep breathing. And back to the middle. Okay, have a little shake out. And we'll just do the one where we're closing the hip and opening the hip. Closing the hip and opening the hip. So we'll just do it really slow first and just focus on the legs so you want to make 
make sure that your knees, if I just turn my shorts up, your knees are in line with the the toes. Bit tricky because I, I can feel my reindeer swinging about. Never mind. <laughs> It was sort of getting in the way when I had it swinging about on my shorts, so I thought if I stuck it to my hat, that would that might work better. So we, you just want to make sure your knee is in line with the toes, and you're feeling your croix open and close. Okay, and then a little bit faster with the arm swings. So you're just allowing the arms to move around. And then we're going to look at some of the latter parts of the 24 step form but we're going to do our balance exercises first tall through the spine sinking the hips sinking the shoulders opening the chest one more time each side little shake out and just come back to your Wu Chi stance so make sure you're correctly lined up you're sinking you're relaxing around the jaw. You can feel the, the toes drawing in. You can feel the head floating up. You sink down. Just take a few slow, deep breaths. Feel very solid and centered and relaxed. And then just tune into your gentle bounce. Again, feel the hips sink, feel the shoulders sink, and then we're going to do that. turn the palms up and you're twizzling round the elbow joint And change.
the shoulders. Really feel that your body is connected and you're using the whole of your body to move. And you're moving from a still, calm and quiet place. Nice, yeah. Much smoother these days, very good. Okay, we'll, we'll do a few more of these and then we'll change to loosening number two. Let's do four more. One, two, three, four. Check your posture first. So get your position correct first and then you move. Much better. Okay, so we've got a good wu chi. Now we can, now we can move. So when you're doing this one, think more about the arm, what's going back. Nice. Okay. So relax around the shoulders a bit more and lengthen through the spine a bit more. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, and then wobbling.
shake out. Right, this time uh, I'll show from the diagonal view. Go into your bow and arrow stance and we're going to do a slow forwards and back and then a slow turning. So you want to make sure your knees are both soft and you're lengthening and relaxed. And then sink back and turn, sink forward and turn. So we're, we're staying nice and tall through the head, nice and relaxed in the shoulders. Okay, now, now have a little shake out and try that on the other side. I'm just going to check just in case someone's... Uh, no, no, it's just us. That's all right. <laughs> so nice and tall. Get your posture first. And then once your feet are in the right place and you're nicely lined up, then you go forward and back and start your moving. Okay, now with the turn, so you sink and turn. two turns per leg with a bit more of a swing in and a little bit faster. And then forwards and back. Remember, use your feet like they're springs. shake out and we'll try that on the other side so the turning one and the forwards and back one on the other side so we get our Wu Chi sorted out first sink down and then heel and toe just let me move my mic out the way so it's a bit less there you go so it's not blocking my feet so we just get our hips sunk, lengthen through the spine and then
make sure your knees are in line with the toes. You're nice and tall through the spine. We're breathing in and out. And then forwards and back. Forwards and back. Just get your shoulders sinking, hips sinking. Breathing in, breathing out. Arms relaxed, feet and legs relaxed. And shake it out. Very good. Okay, so let's, um, we'll do some Qigong and then we'll have a look at these balance exercises. We'll just start here. We're getting nice and relaxed, nice chilled out. Change, wild goose flies. So we'll do a smaller one today. Feel the arms separate the chest open, sink the hips. We'll do one more, and then we'll change to parting the clouds. the arms, lengthen through the spine, feel connected, more time. The dragon plucks the stars from the sky. Nice and calm, very relaxed.
soft way. So this is gentle stretch up. We'll do one more each side. Gentle stretch up and gentle pull down. And the other arm's really relaxed. Last one. Just practice sinking and tail, white crane spreads its wings, grasp the sparrow's tail, white crane spreads its wings. And just relax and shake out a moment. I'll just turn down the um, volume of the music so it's a bit louder all of a sudden. Uh -huh. Oh, that's better. Great. Okay, so we were having a look at White Crane, and um, what you want to do for that is be very particular about your feet and also the feeling of sinking in the hips. So we'll do a couple more rounds of white crane and then we'll, we'll go on to looking at those um, and then we'll do part of the wild horse's main health exercise and then we'll have a look at those um, balancing, uh, improving your balance and footwork exercises and then move on to doing uh, a little bit more of the, right at the end of the form. So you transfer the weight and get your feet in the correct position and then move your arms actually. We'll put them together in a minute. So you stretch and then you have 20% of the weight in the front foot so the hand slightly comes forward. Then you go grasp the sparrow's tail, get your feet correctly placed and then go into white crane. Stretch, release. So we'll do one more time each side, that's much better. So you feel that stretch and then a release, and then on the other side, stretch and release. Good. Okay, have a little shake out. Right, so we're going to do the chicken step, cat step, tiger walking, side step, monkey king uh, takes a seat and wild goose raises its wings right Whew. so let me just move this trip hazard there we go okay so with the chicken step we're going to do the first version where you just let the toes hang and then you go heel toe transfer the weight and then let the toes hang and then then the second version is you have your foot parallel to the ground but we'll do the first version first so nice and relaxed check the posture make sure this is open this is sunk down the hips are sunk got this strong feeling in the legs you're softly gazing forward and you're listening behind and above heel toe Transfer the weight.
So feel the ground on the foot first. We're nice and tall. Heel, toe, transfer, let the foot hang. Heel, toe, transfer, let the foot hang. Okay, and then try backwards. Very good. Okay, version two. So you have the foot parallel to the ground. So like a, um, uh, like a metal detector. They got these flat thing and then they just so quite close to the ground. And then walking backwards. Toe heel. Toe heel. All through the spine. Nice. Okay, next, cat step. So that's when you lift your paw and then put the foot down so in order if you uh, before you do if you have a look at my thermos flask imagine that is a knee and that is a hip so in order for the knee to raise the hip goes down and then the knee raises so think of think of a rotation so the hip joint is a ball and socket ball and socket so think of a of a rotation in the hip joint going downwards and rotating downwards as the knee lifts up if that helps so I raise my knee by rotating the hip down then I go heel toe and transfer the weight here we go we go backwards so you raise your knee it's a bit more tricky backwards you'll notice with the knee raise but this is very good for building the uh, your body's ability to balance it's very good for that so the other thing yeah just shake out a bit if you need to have a quick water break do so um, the other thing to bear in mind when you're doing these footwork and balance exercises is to be very mindful of the contact underneath your feet. So you want to really focus on what you are sensing from your feet that are contacting with the ground. That will really help with the whole balance. Thing. it will it will really help improve it because um, when when you get like the falls prevention services one of the recommended activities for that is the Tai Chi and I, I think one of the reasons why is because we're spending a lot of time noticing what we feel with our feet what we're feeling with our feet and that because there's so many nerve endings in the feet, you've got, I think it's 200,000 receptors, up to 200,000 receptors, uh, no, uh, new, um, sensory receptors. It actually forms quite a big, if they do the brain mapping with the scans and things, it makes a big area of the brain um, that's being, so it's actually good, as well as being good for your balance, it's also good for your brain 
be more aware of your feet, uh, which I find really actually quite interesting. But that's why, why Tai Chi is such a good activity for balance. Okay, so we've done we've done the cat stepping, we've done the chicken stepping. Let's do tiger stepping. So we go in the ball of our foot and we'll just go for a little walk. And I tend to swing my shoulders for this just to kind of make it a bit more exciting. Dun, dun. And you can go backwards as well. Uh, forwards. Fabulous. Okay. Side step. So we'll start here. We'll do a side step and then we'll have a look at wave hands like clouds just to make it a bit more exciting. But we'll heel toe. So Eva was very insistent on the foot that's going out. You sink, you sink. You raise, so remember there's that rotation going on in the in the hip joint. So you've got your head of femur in your hip, uh, in the socket. So, YouTube's brilliant at explaining how the hip joint works. I saw a video about the hip joint and the pelvis and also saw a video about the knee and how the knee uh, works. Uh, they've probably got, got ones on ankles and shoulders and wrists as well, I should think. Okay, other side, so heel, toe. So feel the feet and then move your leg. So don't be too much in a hurry. The A and B is almost less important than the transition between A and B or the journey between A and B. The middle bit is important as well. Okay, and then for fun, what we're gonna do is a bit of wave hands like clouds. So we're gonna go all the way down one side and all the way across the other side. So we should be wave hands like clouds experts. So sideways walking again really works your balance. So balance is part but not the whole of getting a good root. So being centred and rooted. So, uh, the root and centre also involves a certain amount of mind, a calm mind. So you can have a good balance but not a good root if your mind's all over the place. You want to you wanna feel very settled and relaxed in your mind. There we go. We'll come back to the middle now. Yeah, so that was sideways stepping. Sideways stepping. Okay, my favourite at the moment, Monkey King takes a seat. I will just demonstrate that from that diagonal first. So again, you want to be mindful of how your hip works as a ball and socket thing. So you're folding here, but you want to lengthen you want to lengthen through the spine. So you, you fold here like this. And also I'm looking diagonally down and my arms raise. And then I push down with the feet, lengthen up through the head. And then it's like you're looking quite far out. So it's like the monkey king has a little seat and then gets up and looks across his kingdom or her kingdom. We're all, get in touch with your inner royalty. There we are. So, here we go.
So if you want, you can go all the way down to a full squat. Do that at home. <laughs> Unless you want to do that right now, but you can... That's quite full on though, so I wouldn't do too many. But it's quite nice to find out, and you can go into a full squat. Very good for your, very good for your legs as long as you're careful with it. One more time. Okay, and then wild goose raises its wings. So you raise the wings, bring the foot back, and then the foot floats. So here we go. We go one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Go back a little. So eventually that all comes together. One more each side. Oh, lovely. Okay, let's just go back to this one. So just feel your waist turning. I'll show you that from the back view. So I'm keeping my hips sunk, my shoulders sunk, I'm looking forward, I'm listening behind. have a look at golden cockerel stands on left leg and golden cockerel stands on right leg but we want to be very particular about the placement of our hands about the sinking of the hips and getting this lovely vertical alignment on the body so if I just okay demonstration so I'll show it from the front I'll also show it from the side view so this comes down and this comes up like that so you want the elbows down so my elbow is vertical have a look vertical it's not diagonal it's not horizontal it is vertical that means downwards <laughs> and the the hand you've got your lion's mouth or your tiger's mouth so you want to get that sort of shape in the hand the other thing that's happening is my shoulders and my hips are level with each other so you really need to maybe even exaggerate that bend in the leg but you want your hips and shoulders level and I'm also got my foot parallel to the ground show you from the side okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it for five seconds so we get it correct first and then we go one two 
Have I got this right? Wrong way round. One, sorry, two, three, four, five. And then down. Feel that Wu Chi. Transfer the weight, get your foot correct, get your hands correct. So do the feet first, then do the hands. Then you go one, two, three, four, five. And then you put the foot down. That's great. So um, if I show you from the diagonal, so this is down and this is up. I'm also, think about your spine being very straight and long and also that you're completely undisturbable. So imagine being able to stand perfectly still in like a hurricane. So um, I can't remember which one of the storms it was. It was like, it was when we had all these hurricanes earlier on, either this year or at the end of last year, and it was Hurricane this and Hurricane Joe or George or whatever and um, I was out practicing 24 step and it got to golden cockerel stands on one leg and I thought oh my goodness I'm wobbly today I wonder why that is and then I looked and the trees was like bending <laughs> in the wind so I would imagine that if you get really really good at this and you get a good sense of your root so it's not just being good at balance, you want to really get into your root and being very centred and rooted. So you're in your root, so as well as your body being correctly aligned and calm, your mind is completely relaxed. So when you stand on one leg, even if there was a hurricane, it, you would be completely undisturbed and you could just stand there comfortably for, a, you know, maybe an hour or so. That kind of feel, that's what you want to aim for. So we're just going to do a bit of golden cockerel. So it's a very relaxed and wise cockerel that's undisturbable. So you and just practice holding the posture, holding the posture and we're just sinking. So this will make your leg really strong as well. One more time each side, that's fabulous. And we're tall through the spine. Brilliant, shake out. Okay, the other one that stands on one leg is your kick with right leg and kick with left leg. So we'll do that because that's another thing we've been perfecting over the last few months. I'll just show that. So. That one is a little less straightforward, I think, than the golden cockerel, um, in that the, the arms are doing something as well. Now, what I tend to do is what I saw uh, Master Huang Ping do when she does this, although when Master Huang Ping does it, her foot is actually above her head height, but we don't need to do that. I, I kind of usually do about a middle height kick or maybe a low kick. It depends how stretchified I'm feeling. But um, if you ever watch the lady in pink online doing it on YouTube, she is very, very high up, very flexible, but she looks about 20 something. So, you know, um, so there's the leg, there's what's going on in the leg and it's a push kick. So it's a bit like this kick. Um, when we're doing it as a health exercise, we just do the same thing. But in the 24 step form, the kicks are slightly different. So when you're, when you're doing the left legged kick, after you've done your, just before you do your snake creeps down into golden cockerel, we've just done grasp the tiger's ears. The kick actually comes out. So it, it kind of moves that way before it kicks out. But when we're doing the when we're doing the normal right and leg kick out of context, I just do it the same. So I just raise the knee, I extend my foot, I extend my hands, and then I bring them back into play the peeper, and then I come down. So it's a little more involved, and it's a bit harder to keep your balance. 
So I'll just show you on the other side. So it goes one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So all the way through, let's have a little shake out, all the way through in that you're doing controlled rising, controlled extending of the foot, controlled bringing the foot back and controlled descending of the foot. So at no point do you sort of, do you rush any of it. Have a look from the diagonal. And there's this feeling of peace all the way through. Like, you know, like that hurricane's whirling round, there's leaves flying everywhere, there's rain everywhere, there's maybe a couple of herds of elephants or something, but you're just going, no, I can do this really calm, really controlled. So the, the mentality is a similar one to what you get in Step Back and Repulse the Monkey in a way, in that you're just, nothing can stop you doing that kick correctly. Yeah, much less wobbly-fied, very good everybody. Hey! <laughs> oh dear. And don't worry if you do get a bit wobbly fied, it just just sink down more and control your just just relax your mind a bit more. I'll show you that from the side, that might be a bit easier to see. So at no point am I actually lifting up. I'm kind of sinking down all the time. Pull through the spine. So before you raise the leg, get your Wu Chi, get your posture. Posture, posture, posture. Lovely. Okay. Right, we'll let that cook for a bit. That was really nice. That's 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 sort of getting a little bit a little bit better. Let's have a look just to see. So so this ability to to be able to stand on one leg, although it's not something we would obviously, you know, unless we were some sort of um mystic. Um you know, or is it a swami? The guys that, the, those very wise people that are going to spend years standing on one leg for some reason. And they, they, it's for like, um, yeah, we're not that. But we do stand on one leg in parts of the form. And it is quite a good, if you want to get very solid in both legs, it is useful to stand on one leg. And, and that can be quite a useful thing. Now, when we're, it's quite, it's okay standing on one leg when your leg isn't moving. That's actually quite, that's actually kind of okay after all. Where another dimension of wobbliness can come in is when, for example, when we're doing the hidden punch into parian punch, and it only happens once in the form, and the leg comes up, it turns out, and then comes down like that and actually being able to stand on one leg while the leg is doing that and not feel tempted to go straight forwards into that leg is quite tricky 
so because you're because you're changing the angle of the leg it makes it a little bit trickier uh, to stand on it and also you're doing this thing with the with a fist so so what we'll do is we'll do five of those at a nice slow pace and then we'll do five at the other side and see just see where we're at in terms of maintaining stability ma maintaining structural integrity and maintaining one's root which is balance is like a way into root but actually it's not the same thing as a balance uh, Mike would explain it a lot better than what I am because he's been doing Tai Chi a lot longer than me but it's not balance is only the first bit it's, so there you go so let's just try it we'll do, we'll do this side first so this is my left do it on your right so right fist right leg we come up we open that hip and then you just let the leg float down without putting any weight on it and that, that's it and then the other the other hand's just hanging there for now and then we come back oh. And then we let go and we'll do we'll do uh four more two and also just look towards the corner that's it and the, the angle of the arm we're not like that we're not like that we're somewhere in the middle and it's like uh yeah just just relax so how many is that that's two isn't it we've got three left now I'm trying to be better at keeping an idea of what number I'm on when I'm counting. So if you imagine this is a long nose, what you're doing is you're... Oof, it's actually a really nasty move. <laughs> it's, it's wreck Mike's lampshade. So you, you're coming down, boom. So it's like if you put your hand there, boom. It's that kind of thing. But you don't want to go down too low. You just want to go down to there. And then, yeah. So if someone was holding a pad, they'd, they'd hold the pad like that for you to hit, hit down on it. Yeah. So when we're doing this, so we've got three left with that, that foot. So we get your feet, so you transfer the weight, go into cat stance, and then raise the elbow and knee, turn, out so you're opening this quote opening this hip and then it goes down so let your other hand relax let your other hand relax see if you can manage that so keep everything really floppy fine transfer the weight go into cat stance keep your arm nice and low nice and relaxed and then we're just gonna go whoop. better nice yeah is that five I think so. Right, it is now. We'll do five on the other side. So have another look. So I transfer, I uh, cat stance, I come up. There we go. And also, my leg isn't going out too far. It's quite close to my other foot. Because if I have it too far out, then that's harder to balance. So you want it quite... Um, probably... Aim for the same spot that the toe was on in the cat stance. So you're literally just swapping the heel for the toe. Normally when we do rooster stance, we're out a little further. Like when we're just before we're gonna do step back and repulse the monkey. But this time, actually, um, hang on, I've just gotta find something to put a spot. Oh, that's useful. I've got a Tai Chi Union badge. That's nice. And um, I'll lay the Tai Chi Union badge down there. I think you can. No, you can't see it. All right, let's try something else. Uh, a yin and yang stone. <laughs> Hang on. That's it. You can see the stone from there. So I've got my toe on the stone, and then when I do that, I've got my heel on the same stone. You see. 
and I've got my weight in the back leg so I, I could even yeah so right that's one right two transfer the weight going to cat stance now notice where your toes are and that is where your heel will go then you raise the heel raise the elbows make a circle and down but keep your weight in the back foot so you want to be upright upright that's it yeah and then it does move actually in the second part of the but for, for getting the first bit it will make the second part work better yeah here we go three cat stance get yourself nicely positioned good posture nice and tall imagine you're the biggest person in the room and then well I'm just gonna move me reindeer that's better and then you want to use the picture use your picture that you can see of you to make sure you're when you have a look first don't don't join in yet don't join in yet you want your shoulders level you want to avoid this no it's like that so you want to make sure your shoulders are level it's easy to keep your shoulders level by having your hips level even though you're on one leg so let's do number four here we go so we transfer our weight we're nice and level check with your picture on the screen now you raise your elbow you raise your hand now sink down bend this leg a bit more and then that should mean you can do yeah brilliant okay once more with feeling here we go brilliant yeah so then what happens uh, 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 sorry my brain's just exploded I'm no good at doing the mirroring at the moment I've just it's been too long a year but if I do it the normal way so we've just done that and we do that and then it goes see quite a lot of effort for a move that doesn't last very long but that's another one of the moves where you're standing on one leg um hmm four five six seven yeah why not let's put the golden cockerel in context by having the snake creeps down beforehand so it doesn't matter which side you pick we'll start here like this and we might be able to fit two in so it goes one two three four five six seven Whoop. one heel toe two three i think i've got the numbering wrong four five six okay i think i've got the numbering wrong i think this counts as a one doesn't it okay so one and i'll show you from the other side one two oh that's more like it yeah three four five you twizzle six you push down seven golden cockerel stands on left leg or right leg or whichever one then one two three four five six seven I'll, I'll do it that way one two three this is the basic version four five six seven one two three four five six seven great so 
there's a more there's a trickier version I'll just show you one two three four five six seven so if you want you can go all the way down there and do it like that but it is somewhat character building so you might want to do the, the way this way has got a bit more of a sort of martial application because you're kind of going round and it's it's not quite as artistically look nice looking but actually it's um if i just show you imagine this is somebody's leg so i've got a leg there so i've gone uh that's it so and it you, you kind of get that trap there and it will kind of cause them to fall over and then you knee them very nice so but it, it's quite useful for your leg strength and flexibility to do the big one which you see her master huang ping's student the lady in the pink does it that way and it and it is quite good but just for now we'll stick with the basic one but just to say that there's when i practice it myself in the mornings i'm i'm going down quite far um just because then it but you have to do stretching and you have to get the conditioning to be able to get away with doing that okay so let's uh Farah, yeah. Could you just show me how you get from one side to the other? Yeah, yeah. So, um, ha, 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 ha. so say I'm doing. I'll go there, and then I've done my kick, my second kick. Brought it back, and then this is me on the correct side. So I've got, I'm in left cat stance, and I step with my left foot. Uh, one, two three four five six seven then i put my foot down i push down with the ball of the foot hang on the walls in the way i push down with the ball of the foot i tw twizzle on the ball of my left foot and then i go into this one so it's like i'm picking up a sock and i don't want it too near my nose and then i go the other side one two three four five six seven so so it's like this you sort of here put the foot down and like that and then it swaps around so you can then step the other way and then you transfer so if I start here like that and then that way and then that way and then that way and then there's a wall in the way so you so it goes one two three four five six seven that comes down one two three four five six seven so if I break it down you're, you're kind of doing that it's this sort of I think that's where the tiger stepping can come in quite useful because then you're used to being on the ball of your foot so you you kind of press down with the ball of the foot to change the direction if you do that that's quite a useful way in so you push down and then spin round on the ball of the foot it's a bit trickier to do on carpet and then you push down one two three four five six seven eight there you go yeah 
So uh, let's go through the form up until the second golden cockerel and I will attempt to do it mirror side. This might go horribly wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> so let's just go through the whole of the form nice and slowly, but we'll focus more when we're in the second part. Now relax the shoulders, breathe in and out. It might be easier to work out what's going on when we're actually in the context of doing the actual form. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and begin. So mirror me. And also, because I'm in a smaller room, than what ideally I would be using for, for teaching Tai Chi, I will have to kind of go backwards a bit sometimes, which doesn't happen in the actual when you're doing the form in a big room. So, part the wild horse's mane. So just be really nice and relaxed, especially when you're in the first half of the form and relatively more familiar movements. Part the wild horses may have so we go back a little and then we do side step so you side step with your right foot grasp the sparrow's tail white crane spread its wings and then 20 percent of the weight in the front foot that's great and then hold christmas pudding and then brush knee and push so that's where the cat step comes in because you raise your knee, heel toe, brush knee and push, cat step. And then this time spear hand, spear hand, cut down, raise the knee and then you're in play the peepo, you're in rooster stance. So the heel is slightly further forward than your cat stance. So step back and repulse the monkey. One, two, we do four of them, three, and four. Sink forwards, hold the ball, door in left, cat stance, hold the ball, then step forward with your left foot, inspect the horse's mouth. Roll back. Ward off. Nice and tall through the spine, double handed push. Now you sink back, you turn, you push out. Step, inspect the horse's mouth. Roll back, ward off, double handed push, single whip, you stroke your giraffe's neck, now sink your hips first, get into your cat stance, but get that solid, so wait till that's solid, then you move into the rest of single whip. Left foot forward, left single whip. Now you sink your weight into your right foot. Bring your hand to the wrist, hand below. Wave hands like clouds. So you're stepping out with your left foot three times. Hang on, let me just give myself a bit more room. Once, twice, out with the left foot. Third time, out with the left foot. Very nice, back into single whip. nice and tall sink the weight back bring the wrist into the shoulder palm up with your left hand now left foot goes up and this is like bird's beak high pat on the horse heel toe this is another time where we're standing on one leg high pat on horse block over left leg kick with right leg 
raise up, kick, bring the foot back into peeper, open. You're in rooster stance. Bring the feet down, bring the hands down, grasp the tiger's ears. Sink back, turn. Push out, gather under, hold the ball. Now this time you raise your left leg, you turn your left leg out to the side wall, you kick with your left leg, you bring it back. Put the foot down and now we're doing this. So with your left leg, step out, heel toe. So number three, sink and expand. Four, transfer the weight. Five, twizzle on the ball of the foot. Six, push down with your left hand. Seven, golden cockerel stands on left leg. Second time, I'll just go this way a little. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. I will carry on. Step with your left foot. Fair lady works at shuttles. Now we sink back, we turn. Now we're going towards that corner. So step with your left foot again. Fair lady works at shuttles. Now we do the short corner, step with your right foot, we sink back, push out, gather under, hold the ball up to the third corner, step with your right foot, heel, toe, shoulder, hands, foot. Now we sink back, hold, turn, push out, final corner, I think towards my lampshade there, left foot again, step up, Cat stance, high block, sink down. Hang on, let me move this way a bit. Big step out with your left foot. Fan through back. Fan through back, sink back. Bring the hands, turn, make a fist. Nice and tall. So you've got, you're in right cat stance. Now what we were doing earlier, hidden punch. Keep your weight back, put the foot on the floor, now transfer the weight. Step with your left foot, parry and punch. Double handed push, sink back, cross the hand, step out and down. Cross the hands, separate, bring the hands down. Last one. And upright and stand. And then make a fist with the right hand, left hand over the top and feet together about. Well, I never. <laughs> I wasn't expected to go through the whole thing. Well done us! That was brilliant, but I just thought actually it's going to be easier if you do it in the context of the whole form. We will have a look at the, um, I will try and do, yeah, any questions? I got, I got, I got, I got, oh that's alright, that's okay, I mean you all look like you were, do you all look like you were doing Tai Chi, so you had me completely fooled, you know, that's not bad. It's, it's just getting those niggly bits, isn't it? So understanding like, uh, I mean, I'm quite okay when I'm doing the, you know, for example, if I'm doing part of the Wild Horses Mane or Brushing and Twist or whatever, I'm quite fine. It's just the in-betweeny bits I find a bit tricky because they tend to only happen once or twice. So we'll, um, that was so good. I don't want to ruin it by doing it again, you know. <laughs> so let's, let's just, yeah, let's just leave that. Let's let's try out. Um, hang on, where was I? Ah. Yeah. Let's just let's do that. 
we just try our five, six, seven, just to kind of practice our one legged thing, eight, nine, ten. So that's what we're and then it and then from the other side oh my poor brain um from the other side yeah one i'll show you from the side it might be easier to see two three four so it's actually quite hard to stand on one leg from here because you're going from a bow stance into a one-legged stance. Actually, forget the other arm, just do your bird's beak. So we go like that. One, two. So it's the opposite, remember? Like that. That's it, and the leg out, that's it. But you want your, not sticking out, you want it down, like a bird's beak. Three, four. Now put your other leg forward. So have your left leg forward and your right hand out like that. Oh, actually, no, your right hand like this. And then we two, three, and you can push four, five. And that, that's like... So in the context of the form, if I do my single whip, one, two, three, four, five, like that, and then they swap. So, actually, let's do that. We'll do that as a little exercise, and we'll do it both sides. So, we'll start on this one. One, two, three, four, five. Now, sink back turn bring this hand in bring this palm up and put your weight in the back leg now keep your weight in the back leg go into cat stance and then do the bird's beak so like you're pecking someone in the nose with your beak peck them in the nose but take that you try it you know you all, you've all got christmas coming up right so i've just got to practice my tai chi Boof. Oh good it worked. Thanks mate. Yeah, no problem. So let's do that again. <laughs> One, I know how to have fun. Two, three, four, five. There we are. Beautiful. Right, even bigger. Bigger. That's it. Sink your shoulders. Sink your hips. Lovely. Now we're going to sink into that back leg. This hand comes up. This hand comes in. That's it, and it, that stayed in and that's sticking out. Now get into your position first, get into your cat stance. Now as you raise your knee, the front hand becomes the back hand, the back hand becomes the front hand. Ready, go, whoosh. And you peck them on the nose with your beak. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Right, let's try it the other side for fun, just so we're not wonky. So we're now gonna do single whip with the other leg forward and just that'll be even more fun so we go one two three four don't worry if your brain's melted this is for fun my fun five very good one you sink back two you turn bring that hand in bring that hand palm up like someone's just handed you a chocolate orange and then you bring the foot in Cat stance, and then the bird pecks somebody on the nose. Yeah, that's it. And you want to peck them on the nose like that. Yeah. So there's a slight bend in this arm, but not a lot. Not a lot. Let's try that one more time, and then we'd better uh, close the class. So one, two, nice and tall in the nice and tall in the spine. Three, four. Five. 
sleepy tiger eye. So that one's going out to the side, that one's going to the front wall. So the front hand's going towards the screen, the side hand's going towards the side. Now you sink back, you turn your waist, and the waist brings that hand in and that hand up. I'll show you that from the side. Now you go into cat stance, then you sink down and you peck him on the nose. Brilliant, right, that's enough of that. Oh, gosh, that will give you plenty <laughs> to, to fathom over Christmas. Let's just do this. So we'll do three of these and then we'll do some Embrace Tiger. Okay, and then embrace the tiger, return to the mountain. So, um, yeah, just getting ourselves nice and settled and solid and owning our space and feeling comfortable owning our space. Very important for us ladies, that. Being comfortable owning our space, very good. Highly recommended. One more time. And then rub the hands together, polish the face. Rub the hands together again and give the lower back a rub. Oh, what a relief. Fabulous. That's the best bit. <laughs> I really like that. Just helps make everything better, you know. It's like the sugar after, isn't it? You know. Okay, nice and relaxed. Just really tall. Own your space. Feel that calm, quiet place that we're we're operating from. Breathing in and out. And then make a fist with the right hand, left hand over the top, feet together, and bow. Well, didn't we all do very well indeed? That was fabulous. Great. 